plan for you. When God has a plan for you, there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. You understand what I'm saying to you? I want you to see the power of God. So those 16 years that I was strung out, I was a working junkie. I carried a needle in my socks at work because I had to provide for my family. And whenever I needed a shot, I'd go to the restroom like I was going to the bathroom and I'd shoot up. I was a working junkie, y'all. But God said he kept his hands on me the whole time. The whole time. Now listen, I've been sick. See, sometimes we don't know what sick is. But I've been sick for the last two decades. Listen, the woman with the issue of blood, wasn't she sick? How long? Listen, we don't want to be sick for a day. But here's what God said. God said if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Ain't nobody going to escape this. Quit whining about being sick. You're not going to stay there. Just walk through it. Walk through it. Walk through it. Listen, listen. I told you I've been sick for two decades. Let me tell you some of the things that I had done. I'm a, I'm a diabetic, and I was dealing with diabetes since 1992. They diagnosed me with diabetes in 92. I had hypertension in 93, a year after. You know what that's called? That's called a double whammy. I had both of them, and both of them started to cause my kidneys to fail. So by 2001, I didn't have no kidneys. I had to go on dialysis. And at the pinnacle part of my life, I was traveling around the country with my pastor, Bishop James. I'm talking about traveling around the country with him, doing dialysis on the road. So don't tell me about being sick. You know, sick. You got the flu? Come on, my son. Come on. You got a cold? Indeed. And you're talking about being sick? Right. Indeed. Come on now. We get, listen, we serve a mighty God, y'all. We got to be better than this. We got to do better than this. You understand what I'm saying? So I was traveling around the country with my pastor. He didn't even know I was doing Dallas. Get the DVD and watch it. He'll say, you, you was doing Dallas while we were sleeping? I would get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, go to the center, do four hours, get off at 7, come back to the hotel, change, grab me a bite to eat, and I'd be downstairs with the car waiting on him. He didn't believe that I was doing it. But if you're going to operate on this level, you got to operate like an adjutant or an armor bearer. you got to be just like a ghost. They see you, but they don't see you. What you say? What you say? See, any time you want to be seen, you ain't in the right wow. position. <laughs> so as I was traveling, I had five surgeries on my eyes for a retina detachment. Five surgeries on my eyes for retina detachment. Bleeding in the back of my eyes. Okay? The devil told me, you're going to lose your sight. I said, no, I ain't. I got too much to do. I got too much to do. Sometimes you got to talk back to that devil. Don't let that devil talk to you like you crazy. You better say something back to him. So I told him, no, we're not going to do that. But I still had the five surgery. Okay? Then turned around in 2012, I told this to Pastor them earlier, I went, in, I went into the hospital for one thing and they put me in ICU. I went in weighing 212 pounds. 
in ICU. When I got in there, I had double, I had pneumonia in both of my lungs. I had a pair of transplanted kidneys that got infected. My blood got infected. And they was doing dialysis around the clock, 24 seven on me to keep my blood clean. They went to my wife and told my wife, they said, Miss Gray, there's nothing else we can do for your husband. My wife never buckled and never bent. She said to them, I know somebody that can. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. She stood in the gap for me. Yeah. See, yeah. stood right in the gap. Sometimes you got to stand in the gap yeah. for folks. Yeah. Okay, that was 2012. 2013, they were, there was a spot on my left kidney. Now, the kidney wasn't working. The kidney wasn't working, but they, there was a spot on it. They'd been watching it for the last several years. So the doctor said, Holloway, we got to go in and uh, take this kidney out. This thing got big. It's bigger than a normal kidney, and something's going on. I said, okay, no big problem. So they prepped me and get me ready. I find out that there's cancer on my left kidney. Cancer, y'all. So they can't do it arthroscopically. They can't go in and do it that way. They split me straight down the middle, from here to here, in order to get the kidney out. They take the kidney out of me, and when they take the kidney out that had cats on it, I never did a day of chemo, and I never did a day of radiation. No, no, no. See, y'all don't know. That. I got you. See, see, you got to know who God is. I never did a day of chemo, and I never did a day of radiation. God kept the cancer oh, in I one spot. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Thank so you, now, Lord. that's 2012. Okay, I go through that. Then I, I find out I've got vascular circulation problems in both legs. So they put a stent in the left leg, and they balloon the right leg. I think I'm good, you know, so I go on back to work. Then I find out one of my toes get infected on my foot. It gets so infected that they say, Mr. Gray, we gotta cut your toe off. I say, what? <laughs> Just like that. What? So they go in, do the surgery, cut my fourth toe off on my right foot. Two months later, they say, Mr. Gray, something's going on with your, oh with your baby toe. I said, you kidding me? They said, no, we got to amputate it too. So they amputate the baby toe. Mm -hmm. So they didn't cut off two toes on my right foot. And in the midst of cutting off two toes, I'm dealing with a bacteria called osteomyelitis. Google it on your phone or do whatever you have to osteomyelitis. I had it in my right foot. It was eating my foot away. Wow. As I, it was eating my foot away. And they said, Mr. Gray, uh, we might have to take that foot off. Now, I'm not going to tell you what I said to him. <laughs> what you say? But it was not pleasant. <laughs> It was not pleasant what I said to them. And I told them, I said, no, you're not. I'm, you're not, you, you got two toes. That's all you're going to get. That's a plenty. You're not taking my foot. So I had to go into a hyperbaric chamber. Remember Michael Jackson used to sleep in them? Do y'all know what those are? Okay. I went into a hyperbaric chamber for an hour every day for 45 days. 
in order to save my foot. In that hyperbaric chamber, you have nothing but pure oxygen. And it's a healing process. All of this time, I'm, you know, the devil is telling me, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. And God is saying, no, you don't. No, you don't. See, God wants to test us to see whether or not he can trust us. Remember what he did to Job? Have you tried my servant Job? That's all he did to me. He said, have you tried my servant Holloway? Go try it. You can do anything you want to him, but you can't kill him. You understand what I'm saying? So when the test comes, God is just trying to see if he can trust you. The devil can't do anything to us unless God gives permission. Please, y'all, quit whining and crying about these baby incidents that you're dealing with. God is a great God. We serve a great God, y'all. It's time to put away the foolishness. If you're going to serve him, serve him with your whole heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, and listen, the Hebrew boys got in the fiery furnace. They turned the heat up as high as it could go. They didn't break and they didn't bend because God was with them. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Don't ever think that God ain't with you. Don't ever be in a situation where you don't believe God is on your side. Don't ever let the devil tell you that God ain't with you. That devil is a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a backbiter. Yes. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I had all of that done. My wife was with me. She was a witness for me the whole time. And here's the thing that my wife did for me when I was in the hospital. People from all, you know how big the part of the house is. Bishop told people about my situation. They wanted to come and see me. My wife wouldn't let them in. Amen. Let me tell you why she wouldn't let them in. They didn't have the faith. They didn't have the faith. They didn't have the faith that we had. Some of them wanted to be nosy. Some of them wanted to gossip. Some of them wanted to talk about it. Remember, y'all, I was on my deathbed. I was on my deathbed. See? And my wife only let a handful of people in that room that she knew believe like we did. Sometimes you got to cut them off. Sometimes you got to let them go. See, let me tell you something. My mama and daddy taught me a long time ago. Sometimes you got to feed them with that long handle spoon. You know that long handle spoon? They don't, they don't even know it. They don't even know that they ain't as close as they supposed to be to you because you're feeding them with that long handle spoon. You, you, you still being polite. You still being nice. But they ain't as close as they supposed to be. Now, listen, y'all. We got to get this thing together. God is coming soon. Is anybody praying for him to come? My parents used to pray, come Lord Jesus, come. Is anybody praying like that anymore? Y'all, this is not our home. I don't care if you got a mansion. I don't care if you got a, a, a Bentley. I don't care what you got. This is not our home. Make up in your mind that you want that mansion in heaven. Amen? 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 
Listen, you, Lord. God has redeemed me. Thank you. As I told you, I went in weighing 220 pounds, yes. and I, when I came out, I weighed 165. Wow. I was in ICU for nine days. <laughs> nine days, y'all. Lost over 50 pounds. Yeah. I had to learn how to walk again. When I went to use the bathroom, I fell on the floor. <laughs> I had to learn how to use my upper arms again, and I had to go through speech therapy. Look at God. Thank you, Jesus. See, don't tell me God won't do it. Yeah. 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 Wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. Yeah. I said, wait, wait on the Lord yes. and be of good cheer. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now listen, we're going to go into the PowerPoint. I know Pastor brought me here because she wants, now listen, this is an investment. This is an investment for her to say to us, I want you to come. I want you to share what God has put on your heart for my people and for the city. Yes. That's an investment, y'all. Yes. This is the things that we have to do. Yes. Amen? Amen. And we're going to be talking about greatness. Walking in the shadow of greatness, a workbook and study guide. Developing the ministry. Developing the ministry, I, my ministry is the ministry of helps. That's what I operate in. I've been working in the ministry of helps for the last 25 years. And you, you listen, sometimes people get intimidated. Well, I, I ain't nothing but an usher. Shut up! Thank you! Shut your mouth! Yes. Talking like that. Say it. Pastor just said you in the body of Christ. Come on. You in the kingdom. Yes. Well, I'm on the security team, but I don't do too much. What? Amen. Quit complaining about where you are. What? Whether you a PMT, which is an usher whether you're security, whether you're an elder, whether you're a deacon, whether you're a minister. Amen. Let me tell you something about them titles. Mm -hmm. Them titles mean nothing Amen. if you're not going to operate in the field that you've been called to. Amen. They mean nothing. Amen. Nothing. You get no credit. Right. Wow. <laughs> you get a big old zero. What? And you got this big old title. What? Oh yeah, I'm Elder So and So. What? You didn't know me? Who? Well, let me tell you who I am. Go sit down somewhere. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Go sit down. Come on. See, see, that's old school. Right. And see, we done got in this modern day uh, uh, lifestyle, and we scared to tell people. Right. But let me tell you something. If you got the boldness of God in you, you yeah. say, no, no, baby. No, no, no. We don't do that here. I know that. Now, come on. Let me pull you to the side and let me talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give you a warning this time, but the next time, I'm going to take some action. <laughs> see, that's the boldness of God. Yeah. And when you see it, you're not, listen, if you don't say nothing, shame on you. Shame on you. Let me go on. <laughs> the Ministry of Helps. I've been in this for the last 27 years, 25 years. And what I do is, my heart is to serve. That's all I do. I serve. I started by learning to serve my pastor. But God chastened me because I started serving my pastor in such an idle way that he asked me what was I doing. I said, I'm serving the body of Christ. He said, then who am I? 
I was putting too much focus on my pastor, idolizing him because of who he was. If you don't serve, you gotta serve the body cross across the board. You can't pick and choose. I'm gonna be nice to this one. I'm gonna be mean to this one. I'm gonna do this to this one. I'm gonna do that to that. No, go sit down. We don't need you right now. You need a little bit more word. We're gonna get some word in. We're gonna get this word in. If you come in and you not feeling good, go to your knee. Don't be up there serving. Talking about, come on in here if you're coming. <laughs> I bet you bet not. I bet you bet not. Because you having a bad day. We went to a restaurant one time, and the guy was having a bad day. I said, where's your manager? You're not going to have no bad day on me. Right. <laughs> no, that's right. You might have a bad day on somebody else, but you're not going to have a bad day on me. And I'm spending my money? You done lost your mind. <laughs> Secular or the church? If you're going to have a bad day, let your leader know. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Let you, I'm not feeling good. I, I don't think I'm going to do good today. You know. You know who you are. Ain't nobody got to check you. Listen, don't nobody know you no better than you. You understand what I'm saying? So that ministry, I love it. I love serving people. I love serving the body of Christ. I love giving because God said in his word, the greatest calling is to serve. That's the greatest calling, y'all. And don't nobody want to do it. You know why? They call you a flunk. You're a flunk. You ain't doing nothing. You just, you just brown nosing. You, you just sucking up to them. Let them. Let it go in one ear and out the other. Don't process that mess. That ain't nothing but mess. See, if you're going to serve, serve wholeheartedly. If you're going to serve, give it the best that you got. In all that I've done, I've always gave my best. If you don't do no more but give your best, that's all pastors ask for. Am I right, pastor? Just give your best. You ain't got to act like you you the greatest. Just give your best. Amen? Okay. There is a rhythm that Pastor Pennell has. And you being in leadership, whether you the armor bearer, whether you an elder, whether you a deacon, whether you a minister, whether you a janitor, you got to catch that rhythm. You got to catch it because she's got a beat that is on God's point. And you got to catch that beat because she don't need nobody that's not going to catch that beat. If you can't catch that beat, you're in the wrong place. You see what I'm saying? She's got a rhythm that you got to catch her. It ain't about her catching your rhythm. Listen, two heads is a freak. <laughs> now, pastor, pastor, can I be real? Listen, two heads is a freak. So it's only one visionary in the house. You follow the orders whether you like them or you don't like them. You do what you're told whether you like it or you don't like it. If you got a disagreement, take it to God. Now, take it to God and see what God say. Because see, if you're wrong, God going to chastise you. See, I've been there. I've been done this. My bio says I'm a professor, but I'm also a student. You understand what I'm saying? I'm always learning. 
Always learning. So you got to catch this rhythm. There's a rhythm that she has in the house. You got to catch it. If you're going to be here, be a part of it. Catch the rhythm. You say, well, Deke, how you catch the rhythm? Pay attention. Watch the woman of God. Watch the man of God. Catch their spirit. Catch their anointing. Catch what they do. So you got to catch all of this. This stuff that I'm telling you, it'll work in the secular world. You got to catch the rhythm that's on her, and you got to catch the rhythm that's in the house in order to stay caught up. Now, you're going to get tired sometime. Just take another breath, take a deep breath, and let's keep it moving. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Called to serve, not to preach. All right. All right. Everybody is not called to preach, y'all. Right. See, you didn't let somebody get in your ear. Right. Child, child, you know what? Ooh, ooh, you got a preacher's voice. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Have you thought about pastoring? Are you a preacher? You got to watch the devil. You got to watch the devil, y'all. If you know that's not your call, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Do not bother it. Do not touch it. Do not attempt to touch it. You have to have a special anointing on you to pastor. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. So, serving the body of Christ, idol and worship. Remember I told you? I got so good at serving the bishop that I started idling him. You can't get that good that you start idling your past. You, you know what God said? God said, I am a jealous God. And God said to me, then who am I? He asked me the question because I was putting too much attention on it. He said, who am I? I said, you God. He said, then what are you doing? I immediately apologized and asked for God's forgiveness. So as you serve your leader, and you give to your leader, don't idolize them. Don't do that. Don't put them on that pedestal. See, all of us, see, your pastor was is still a servant today. She just serves at a different level. See, she serves at a different level. But, but listen, who brings the word? See, and when you're in a crisis, Pastor, can, can you give me 10 minutes? Pastor, I need a bill pay. See, ain't nobody talking loud yeah. about that. See, but I, listen, I know. I know what goes on in the church. You run up behind, you know, come behind when, when service is over. Can you help me? Right. <laughs> see, right. see, this is what happened for real, y'all. But you don't want to serve. But you need some help. What kind of mess is that? I'm going to call it just like it is. Child, when I finish today, y'all going to say, that boy is crazy. <laughs> but it's a mess, y'all. If you're going to serve, serve with your whole heart. Whether you ushering or whether you a uh, 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 usher or deacon, it don't matter what level you serve on, just serve. That's right. I've seen people come in the church, it'd be a big old piece of paper on the floor, and they walk right past. Yes. 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 That ain't my job. What is your job then? Right. If you brought it to the church, this is your church. Why would you leave that paper down there? 
Just because you got a janitor that comes in to clean, help them clean. Yes, sir. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Let me tell you something. We got a responsibility. Yes, sir. See, people do stuff when pastors around. Oh, you, you need to do that, pastor. I'll do that right now. Pastor, when we go, I'll do that right now. What do you do when pastor is not around? What do you do when they're not around? See, see, it ain't pastor watching. God's watching, y'all. I know we don't give enough amens and pats on the back and okay and thank yous. I know we don't do that enough. But God is keeping record. God is keeping record, y'all. Amen. Can't buckle under stress. See, you want to be in leadership. You want to be in leadership, but leadership is stressful. Leadership is stressful. And then the first thing you want to do is cuss somebody out. Oh, you so-and-so, so-and-so, so... Just a minute ago, you told me you was out of so-and-so. And because ain't no more parking over here, and I got to send you over there, now you going to cuss me out. Oh, no, listen. I'm going to keep this thing real. I'm going to keep it real. Before it's done, you're going to say, this boy is crazy. But I'm going to keep this thing real. See, 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 if you're going if you're going to buckle up under a little stress, then you might not be in the right position. You might need to go back in the pews. Oh, See, as I told you before, titles mean nothing if you're not going to feel the responsibility that goes with the title. Let me tell you something. I used to come in, I worked a secular job before they hired me full time. I would get, my wife would tell you, she's sitting right there. I would get off work, wouldn't even go home. I'd go straight to the church, stop, start emptying trash, mopping the floors, Cleaning up My and making Lord. sure everything was done before Wednesday night Bible study. My listen, Lord. Listen. And I turned around and did it on Saturday look, to get ready look. for Sunday. Yes. My God, look at it. See, I was working a secular job making good money. Yes. I made good money and good yes. benefits. Yes. I didn't have to do that. But look where God has put me. See, don't box God in. God might have something for you. Don't box God in. See, when God don't answer you, you just boxed him in. Oh, what you say? You just box God in because he didn't answer your prayer. Well, I guess you, you you don't love me. No, you don't love yourself. Right. Learn to love yourself. Yeah. And then God will love you. Amen? Amen. So stress. Listen, and stress, you got to do stuff that will ease that stress up off of you. Yes. yes. Go somewhere. Yes. Take some time off. Yes. Read a book. Yes. Take a hot bath. Yes. You know, something simple. It ain't got to be expensive. Right. Go to the movies. Right. right. Laugh a little bit. Yes. Go see a comedy. You don't laugh enough, no way. Oh, that old bitter looking face that you walk around with all day long. Don't nobody want to see you. That's why you ain't got no friends. You 
got to, the Bible says, show yourself friendly and you will have free. See, I smile every day. When I get up out the bed, let me tell you what I do. I put my foot down just like that. You know how you crush a roach? Just like that. That's what I do. Guess what? I let the devil know I'm up and coming. Quit running from this devil. Quit running from him. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Come on, sir. Just merely mouthing around like our God ain't God. What? You better act like you got some sis in these last days. You better act like you want God to use you in these last days. Let me tell you something. If he can take a jockey that used to shoot dope in his body for 10 years, then he can take any of us. Don't you underestimate who God is. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. That's right. I'm sick of it. Can you handle difficult people? Y'all know, y'all know who they are. Y'all know who they are. I ain't, I ain't got to start calling them out, but I will if I need to. I will if I need to. You know them folks that, that like I said, they, they elder so and so, they deacon so and so, but then they'll cuss you. You know them folks that that they walk around. You know, like they so holy, and then the next thing they know, they are were gossiping about you. They broke the gossip up on you. And they don't even know the true story, but they gonna gossip about you anyway. Can you handle difficult people? Let me tell you something. If you don't ask for God to give you the boldness, See, you got to ask God for these things. Yes. Yeah. I got boldness to say what I say. Yes. Oh, I'm nice, and I'm meek, and I'm mild, yes. but go the wrong way on me. <laughs> right. I bet I sick. I bet I sick God on you. Yes. I bet I do. And guess what? I'm coming right with it. Yes. <laughs> he he going to be right behind me, say what I told you to say. And guess what? I'm a saint. Yeah. See, you got to have the holy boldness. Yeah. Now, you ain't got to be arrogant, and you ain't got to be rude, and you ain't got to be pompous, and you ain't got to be none of that. He said, humble yourself before me and my people. This is what he told me before I went into full-time ministry. He told me, he said, if you humble yourself before me and my people, he said, I'll take you places you ain't never been. All right. I've been all over the world twice, y'all. All over the world, and it didn't cost me a dime. Wow. God told me he was going to do it. See, he's looking for people. He's searching the land who he can choose and pick that he can use. But ain't nobody putting a hand up no more. What did you say? The reason they ain't putting their hands up because they scared of this devil. What? But if you knew who God really was and who God really is, you would throw your hand up every day. God, yes. I'm available. Yes. I'm available to you, God. Use me any way you want to. Hallelujah. See, here's the thing about God. Don't nobody want to be crushed no more. Now listen, listen, y'all. Listen. We are not exempt from this. No. If he crushed his son, you got to be crushed. Some got to be crushed. Somebody, somebody got to be pruned. Somebody got to be cut back. 
Whatever he got to do, give him the will to do it. Yes. Whatever God needs to do, say, God, I'm available. God, I'm available. God. Say, God, I'm available. God, I'm available. Say, God, I'm available. God, I'm available. God, I'm available. Now, do you mean it? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Amen. I'm going to give you about 10 more minutes, then we're going to take lunch. Is that okay, Pastor? 30 minutes. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Lord. See, you have to, listen. I, do y'all know y'all in a fight? Yes. No, 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 no. Do y'all really know this is a fight? Yes. See, if you don't know you in a fight, you're in, you in the wrong arena. You are in the wrong arena. We are in a fight, y'all. I come out swinging every day. Yes. What? 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 Come on. What you got? See, I asked the devil, what you got? I don't back up no more. Exactly. <laughs> I don't back up no more. All right. Quit backing up yes. and face the issues at hand. Yes. Whether it come from God or whether it come from the devil. Yes. Face yes. what you got to face. Come on, face it. God said I'll be with you the whole time. Yes. He said he can't lie. Yes, Let me tell you how powerful he is. He looked around when he finished, and he said, who can I swear to? <laughs> who can I swear to? <laughs> he looked around. Who can I? He said, well, my God, I can't find nobody to swear to. So I'm going to have to swear to myself. Yes. Read the book, y'all. <laughs> That's a powerful piece. Yes, For him to look all over the universe and couldn't find nobody that he could swear to but himself. Amen. 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 Can you handle difficult people? Yes. Yes. Ooh, that was so weak. Yes. That was so weak. Listen, let me tell you something. When you run across difficult people, Mm -hmm. You keep a smile on your face, yeah. and you're very polite, yeah. but you handle God's business. Yeah. Yeah. See, I know you didn't know how. How do I? How do I do that, D? This is how you do it. Keep a smile on your face, uh -huh. and whatever the issue is, if you know they're wrong, you say, "Baby, we don't do that here. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do that here. Now, this is what we do here. Now." I'm going to warn you right now. I'm going to correct you, and I'm going to correct you in love. See, you got to do this in love. See, love supersedes everything. See, you can't, you can't come with no wrath. Now, you know you was wrong. I caught you. I caught you. You know I caught you. You can't come like that. You got to come in love. Because some people don't just don't know. Right. They, just don't know. they knew. They don't know. They just don't know. See, you done forgot where you come from. Right. Yes. Right. Right. Don't forget where you come. Yeah. Well, I've been in the church twenty years. So what? <laughs> what do that mean? Right. <laughs> what do that mean? Explain that to me. See, being in the church twenty years don't mean nothing if you ain't been involved in the church. Yeah. <laughs> If you ain't undergird, if you ain't undergirded your pastor in the church, if you've been sitting in the pews for 20 years getting fat on the word and not going back and sharing it back to other folks, that don't mean nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Passion. All right. Let me tell you something. I look for passion every day. Every day I look for passion. Every day. You ought to have passion. Your passion is your power. We went to the airport yesterday, wasn't it, honey? We went to the airport yesterday, and we was checking in, and my wife does most of that. And she was checking in, went up to the little box, and was uh, 
checking us in and stuff. This guy came over out of nowhere. He had one of them red jackets on. I guess he was a manager or something. He was, he was higher than, you know, some of the other folks. And he came up to us. Oh, how y'all doing? Oh my goodness, where y'all going? Here, let me help y'all. I said, oh yes, my yes, God, yes. look at that passion. Yes. I, I mean, listen, I started bubbling on the inside. I said, oh my God. I could have I did a jew right there, right there in the night. I could have I just gave God praise. Just, oh God. Just, I could have gave you praise. Because I was looking at passion. My wife know what she doing. He said, no, 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 let me help you. <laughs> he jumped right in there, started touching the buttons and helping him. And when he finished, I said, man, I love that passion. He said, I said, I see it all over you. I said, it's oozing out of you. Yes, yes. See, that's what you got to have. All right. I don't care if you're a janitor. Yes, you got to have passion yes, for yes, what sir. you do. All right. yes. I had a guy polish my shoes mm. yesterday in the airport. Hispanic guy. And we were talking. Once again, God showed me the passion. He wasn't no more than a shoe shine guy. But he had the passion for what he was doing. Yes. See, I walk in favor, y'all, every day. Listen, let me tell y'all something. You better start asking God to let you walk in favor. I walk in favor every day. I can go to the grocery store with my wife. I said, okay, God, we need favor. All right. All right. Wherever we go, yeah. we ask for favor. Yes. Wherever you go, yes. God, I'm going to see the doctor. Yes. I need favor today. Yes. I need favor. Yes. See, ain't nobody asking for nothing because the devil on your shoulder. Right. And you're so scared of the right. devil, you don't know how to ask what? God for his right. You better start asking God what for favor. You better start asking God for favor. Yes. In your prayer time, yes. ask God for favor. Yes. And watch and see won't God show up. Yes. Well, happy. Now let me tell you something. If he going to show up and show out, you better give him some glory. Yes. 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 Listen, ain't none of this no more than a test. Yes. Yes. The Bible says we walk by faith, not by sight. All this is is a faith walk, y'all. Don't be intimidated what you see all the time. Well, you all nervous and shaking and then broke out with this and broke out with that. The devil is alive. Grab hold of yourself. Put your emotions aside. Yeah, we do. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Don't let your emotions guide and lead you into what God is trying yeah. to take you. Wow. God got something great for all of us. <laughs> strong desire. That's what passion is. Yes. It's a strong desire. It's it's a it's it's you feeling like I would do this in regardless. All right. What you say? All right. All right. I want to do this. Yes. I do this good. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. See, you gotta have passion like yeah. that. Thank you, Lord. Powerful emotions. Enthusiastic about it. Excited about it. Even when I have a bad day, I have a good day. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm having a ball up here. Hallelujah. I'm having a ball. You know why? Because I'm crushing that enemy. Yeah. I'm crushing that enemy. Every chance I get, yeah. I crush it. Yes. Now, if you don't know the power that you possess, Ooh. shame on you. What you say? Right there. Right there. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge is power. 
And if you don't have the knowledge to know what you know, Christ. you can never unknow what you know. Wow. Did y'all hear what I just said? You can yeah. never unknow what you know. If you do, you're a fool. I hope y'all taking notes. I hope y'all getting this. Pastor has invested in this for the city, for her church, for her members, for her people. She wasn't prejudiced about this. No, she wasn't. We got to get right, y'all. Yes. Boundless enthusiasm. Just, I mean, just skip it. Oh, you just skip it. You so happy. Just skip it. It's a great day, y'all. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell y'all something. If the Lord wake you up, it's a great day. Somebody didn't wake up today. And you wake up all sluggish. Oh, shit. My God, another day. What? <laughs> like you don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with what your mind? Wrong. Listen, get rid of that stinking thinking. Get rid of it. We got work to do, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> whether it's on the big level or whether it's on the small level. We got work to do. And until he comes, get busy. Yes. Amen. Amen. You would do it free. That's what your passion is. You would do it for free. You would do it whether they paid you or wouldn't pay you. Let me tell you something. I told y'all what I was doing. I was cleaning the commodes. I was taking the trash out. I, I got on the duplication machine. My, my, my. Bishop would call us at 12 midnight. We would get up at 12 midnight, go make CDs yes. or DVDs until 3 or 4 in the morning, take them to the airport, ship them out, and then get home and go to bed for two hours and get up and go to work by 7 o'clock. I got it. Third. And you complaining? How do you think we built that ministry? Talk to us about it. How do you think that ministry got built? Get no angel come down and say, oh, don't worry about this. We're going to do this for us. It take us, the people, to do this. Whatever you do, yes. give your service give it. to the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. I didn't work. My wife sometimes say to me, she say sometimes to me, uh, baby, now, what, where are you going? I say, I got to go out here and do this. Okay. Uh, now, you know you got to work in the morning. I say, yeah, I know I got to go. I come in two hours before I have to go to work. I lay down for an hour, get up, jump in the shower. She fix me something to eat. Now let me tell you a little bit about this woman. Because I'm going to throw this in. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw this in. Listen, you know how you are in marriage. Marriage go are your, are your ups and downs, right? You got your ups and downs and things of that nature. So we've had our ups and downs. But this woman has never, I don't care how mad she has got with me or at me, she has never not cooked me food. My, listen, let me tell you how bad this woman is. Now, this is for you, for you, for your wives and your women. I don't care whether you're single or not. You better get it together. My wife 
gets up at least an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, <laughs> to make sure I have breakfast every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Come on. My wife prepares my lunch every day. Come on, dog. And my wife cooks my dinner every day. Come on. person that they love. 
See, when yes. you fall out of love, Fresh. if life ain't there, yes. guess what? Yes. You go on your separate way. Yes. But if you got a bond and like is what there, then guess what? You're going to stay together. Yes. Right. Yes. I just threw that in. Yes. All right. I just threw that in because we're talking a little bit about, you know, relationships and that yes. sort of thing. But listen, you got to learn to not just love the person, yes. you got to like the person. Yes. See, she still makes me happy. Thank you, Lord. She still makes me laugh. Right. Mm. She still knows how to tickle me. Mm. She still knows how to make me feel good. All right. See, that's liking somebody. Right. Yes. Right. I know I get on her nerves sometimes. I know that. And the love ain't there all the time. But we have a partnership. And when the love ain't there, the like is there. We got something to back up. That old devil ain't coming in there. Yeah, that old devil ain't coming in there. Now, listen. Five minutes. Okay, okay. Give me five. <laughs> Listen, I said that so that if you're dealing with your marriage and there are some challenges there, learn to like the person that you love. Learn to like them. I bet you'll see a difference. And quit arguing over minute stuff. Stuff that don't matter. You know, stuff that you could just let drop. See, you see, you gotta listen. If you don't pray for nothing else, pray for discernment. You gotta know when the devil's trying to come in. You don't even pay attention. You just a arguing, just a fussing, just a fighting, and the devil just does slip right in. Yeah. He just does slip right in. Oh, I got him right now. Look at him. They about to throw blows. Oh my God, oh my God. I told you God, didn't I tell you? They ain't yours, they not. They ain't yours, they not. Right. Come on now. That's how the fight goes. That's a fight. Listen, the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. We have to know that. You have to have discernment. You have to know when the devil is trying to trick you, Amen. trying to fool you, yeah. trying to entice you. Yeah. You got to know these things, y'all. Yes. We are in our last days. Yes. Yeah. God's coming soon. Yes. I don't know when he's coming, but I'm going to be ready. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. See, when, when God comes, it ain't going to be no tag team. Oh, wait, let me call Janie. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Ooh. Let me call Jimmy. Let me get Jimmy. Jim. It's a split. All it's going to be is a split second, y'all. Yes. It's going to be a split second when he busts the scowl. And if you ain't ready, you're going to be left here. And you're going to have to call this home. Oh. Wow. Mm. I know you don't think about things like that, but you better start. Yes. You better get your mind right and start thinking about the things that are important to you, that's yes. important to your kids, that's important to your grandkids, so that we can leave a legacy. That's what we're talking about. We ain't got time for this foolishness, y'all. We got to get it right. Amen? Amen. Now listen, we're going to take a break. Is that right? Yes, sir. We're going to take a break and eat lunch. Yes, sir. We're going to take a break and we're going to eat lunch. And y'all come back in here. I'm talking about with an anticipation. Amen. Pastor said y'all going to pull it out of me. Yeah. I need you to pull the rest of this out of me. Yeah. Yes. See, I listen, I got enough to go for another two hours if you oh, want to. All right. But you got to pull it out of me. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. 
So while you eating lunch, say, God, help the man of God to get this out of him, yeah. whatever yeah. it takes. Yeah. Just whatever it takes, God. We need to hear the rest of this. I need it for me. Just say it to vigil. Yeah. Just say, whatever your needs are, just start telling God what your needs are. Just start telling what your needs are. Get me better for the church, God. Let me be a better servant. Yeah. Let my heart be right. Yeah. Let my mind be right. Yeah. Yeah. See, one of my prayers is this. God, help me with my disposition. Yeah. 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 That's one of my prayers. Help me with my disposition. See, I'm nice. But Lord, if you cross me the wrong way, you do it. Uh, say, don't you do it. And I see the devil. <laughs> if I see the devil and you done cross me the wrong way, <laughs> we get ready to get into something. And guess what? I'm not gonna lose. What you say? I'm not gonna lose. I'm not losing. Let me tell you this story before I break. I'm gonna tell you one story. I went to this I went to this halfway house and I was talking to these teenagers. It was about a half a dozen of them, eight of them, something like that. And one of them came in, he didn't want to be bothered, he didn't want to be there. I knew he didn't want to be there. He about six one hundred eight pounds. Didn't want to be bothered. So I told him, I said, Y'all come on sit around me. He didn't want to sit around me. He wanted to sit back. I said, no, come on up here, brother. I'll shut up. Oh, oh. I said, okay. I said, come on up. I said, I, I ain't going to hurt you. I said, I'm here to help you. So he came up. So the staff standing around. Well, the staff already know who he is. I don't know him. I don't know him from Joe Blow. So I said, come on up. So. I asked them a question. I said, are you going to sit there with your head down the whole time? He said, shut up, old man. I'll slap you. Huh. <laughs> now, I done spotted the devil. Come on. <laughs> I knew this was the devil. Right. I already spotted him. I said, oh, 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 okay, this is the devil. So I said, okay. So I said, I'll tell you what. I said, if you feel froggy, then leap. I said, if you leap over here, this old man going to beat your tail up so bad, you ain't going to know what happened to you. That's what I told him. Guess what he did? He didn't budge. So his staff said, come on, Jimmy, we're going to take that. I said, no, 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 no. See, you got to call the devil out. I said, no, 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 no. Leave him right here. Leave him right here. Leave him right here. See, I made him stay right there. And he didn't say a word, but he was in the presence of God. I made him stay in the presence of God the whole time. I talked for an hour and 15 minutes, and he didn't budge. Amen. See, you got to call that devil out when you know him. See, the devil want to act a fool on you. I said, you ain't going to act no fool on me. I said, jump over here if you feel froggy if you want to. I bet you won't jump back. <laughs> now, listen. That wasn't intentional. That just happened. That was a moment's notice. I had to let. I had to put the devil back in his place. See, this 18 year old boy, 180 pounds. You gonna whoop me? I bet you don't. I'll beat you with a chair for you whoop me. What you say? Whatever I gotta grab, I'm gonna I'm gonna whoop you. You're not gonna get this one. You, and before it's over with, guess what? You're going to respect me. I know, Pastor, I shouldn't say all this on the camera. You cut, cut out what you want. Cut out what you want. Cut out what you want. But I, I, I want the devil to know you're fooling with the wrong folks. You're fooling with the wrong one. Listen, you got to have a disposition and an attitude to say, no, devil, 
Right. Not today. Right. Get yourself together and tell the devil no. Right. Amen. Amen. Let's go to lunch.